Welcome to our lecture online and here taking a closer look at mean scattering. There's one more aspect that we should talk about. And so again, coming back to the relative size of the particles off of which light will scatter. So these are the photons coming from the sun, entering the atmosphere, and scattering out the very small particles like, like atoms and molecules in the atmosphere. The radius of those are about 10 to the minus 4 micrometers, which would put it at about 100 uh, uh, nanometer. No, not 100 nanometers, 100 picometers. So less than a nanometer, so less about a tenth of a, uh, a nanometer, so to speak. And because of that, particles being very small in the atmosphere, we have what we call Rayleigh scattering. So the scattering kind of looks like a peanut, where we have the predominant scattering in the direction of the incoming light, forward and backwards, and there's some uh, relatively small amount of scattering towards the sides. When the particle gets larger, for example, when the radius of the particle gets to be about 0.1 micrometer, which is about 100 nanometers, about the size of a UV photon, then you can see that the scattering becomes more directional. So then we call it me scattering. And so the predominant amount of light gets scattered forward in a forward direction, the same direction as the incoming photons, and less light gets scattered to the sides and backwards. And then you can see as the particle gets uh, very large, here a particle in the range of about one micrometer, which is larger than the wavelength of visible light. Visible light is from 400 to 700 nanometers, which is 0.4 to 0.7 micrometers. So when the particles become larger than the wavelengths of the photons coming in, then we have a very pronounced what we call me scattering. It ranges to the border of optical scattering. And then you can also see that there tends to be what we call an interference pattern, that fraction pattern that, that then evolves. You can then see that the scattering, the magnitude or the intensity of the scattering, then develops these lobes. So we have strong scattering in this direction and very little scattering in this direction on strong, very little, strong, so forth. So we have the separation of regions in different directions where you have strong scattering and little scattering, strong scattering and little scattering. And these are the typical patterns that we uh, detect when we do, of course, uh, radar waves. With radar waves we have these what we call side lobes and predominantly scatter lobes like that where we have lobes coming straight back on the incoming radiation and then we have regions where there's very little scattering back and then we have these side lobes here that people have to contend with when they're trying to understand what's going on when they send radio waves to a, to a target and the target then, then scatters in the same sense as what we call me scattering and then we have these directional lobes of scattering. Again that happens at particle sizes that are larger than the incoming photons. And we'll give you a little bit more idea of how that really works. So don't imagine that the scattering is the same in all directions or that it's uniform in all directions, but there's actually what we call a interference pattern that develops because of the scattered waves then beginning to interfere with each other and you have these what we call interference patterns when, they when they're out of phase, when they're getting scattered off the particles. So that's additional information to understand how photons work and now in the next video we'll get the details of how that relationship happens between the scattering coefficient and the various ratios of the particle size to the wavelength in me scattering.